Hi ladies, welcome to the next in my video series with amazing female entrepreneurs. Um, this week we are speaking to the fantastic Jennifer Chamberlain. Um, so I'm going to pass you over to Jennifer and she can introduce herself and tell you who she is, what she does and a little bit about herself. Hi Jennifer, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks Katie. How are you? I'm really well, thank you very much. So yeah, go ahead and tell us a little bit about you. Um, so I've been living in France for 18 years. Um, I came over here to work with Disneyland Paris wow. um, and then uh, after a couple of years there I decided to change career slightly mm -hmm. um, so I became a bilingual junior assistant in, um, in Paris mm -hmm. um, and then since then I've been working as a PA for 15 years in various companies I've moved around a little bit in order to move up okay. um, and 18 months ago I started my own business as um, a virtual bilingual assistant so working from home fantastic and how do you find working from home uh i love it i love it i still haven't had a day where i've got bored um Excellent. and i know some people say um you can you know it can be lonely at home but actually with all the technology we have today on social media and being able to jump on skype calls exactly and calls, it's just it's not lonely at all no and I can see from the toys that you definitely have children. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how, how do you find um, the kind of flexibility from working from home? Obviously, I do a very similar thing. So um, I love the fact that I can be there for the children as well. So how do you find that? Absolutely. So it's enabled me to um, take them to school every morning, which mm -hmm. is nice. Yep. Um, and then um, leave, be flexible around their needs. So, um, for example, when they have medical appointments, mm -hmm. then I can I can arrange my diary to um, accommodate that. Yes. Um, the, that's the good side of it. The downside is that if I take three hours out during my working day to take them to an appointment, then I have to make that time up. Yes. <laughs> um, either in the evenings or on the weekends and sometimes that's a you know it's, it's a bit of a struggle it's not like having a nine-to-five where you're out of the off you're out yeah. of the house and then when you come home you forget about it but to be honest the PA work wasn't like that either okay um PA work but you know, once you get to a higher you know a high enough level then you can't switch off just because you're at home um, I've had bosses that have called me or sent me messages first thing on a Saturday morning, um, late at night, um, and it is just part and parcel with the job, really. It's, okay. it's not something I mind, uh, and, you know, it's what I, I signed up for when I became a PA. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's flexible, but, you know, juggling all the time as well. Definitely. So tell us a bit about um, your story. How did you get to even work, live in France? Give us a bit more about your background and your kind of story. Um, yeah, how you got to here, really. Um, so uh, I was, uh, so I grew up in Norfolk. That's mm -hmm. where um, I, I studied. And um, just as I was finishing my GCSEs, um, my parents um, gave me the opportunity of doing an app academic year in France mm -hmm. um, basically my mum's idea was you can go for it at 16 and if you don't get it you can try again at 18 okay <laughs> um, <laughs> which was cool she was confident yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah so I went through the in I went in through the recruitment process and yep. I got I got accept I was accepted when I was 16 so I actually came over here as a 16 year old um, discovered Paris um, which was amazing for a Norfolk lass like me <laughs> um, lived with a family went to language school for six weeks so it was very intensive mm -hmm. what was awesome that we had was that we had um, the lessons Monday to Friday but we had visits out on the Wednesday so we got to see some hidden treasures um, rather than you know just the ones that everyone goes to the mill yeah and the Eiffel Tower um, so it was an awesome time it really was very enjoyable and then I moved out to Nantes where I finished um, I finished the school year um, in a French school um, mm -hmm. doing it exactly the same thing as all the French students um, apart from the fact that they had an exam that year that I chose not to sit because okay. obviously I'd just been through GCSEs um, and I knew I was going to be going back to the A-levels so I was very much like this year is about learning French it's not about exam stress mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah so yeah so I went back to England did my A-levels um, did um, French, German and psychology so obviously the French was easy <laughs> <laughs> it was cool um the german was easier as well because i'd been carrying on my german here okay um, so i sort of had an extra year 
um, which did help. Um, and then it was only really the psychology that was the really, you know, the long essays and yeah. stuff. And so, but I, I mean, I loved it. I loved the subject. So I enjoyed that. And then I went off to uni to um, become a speech therapist. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that was London. So I loved living in London. I loved the, the energy and just the way that you can yeah. have so much to do. Um, there's always something going on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, I had a bit of a ca catastrophic second year for various reasons. Mm -hmm. um, so it came, the second year came to an end and I was thinking, what, what do I do next? And I needed to find a way of funding myself, supporting myself. Um, so I was um, looking for a job and my housemate at the time came home with a newspaper that said, um, uh, that had an ad in it, uh, just a small ad, and it said, uh, she works in Disneyland Paris. And I read that, and it was just one, you know those light bulbs moments, yep. light bulbs moments, and, and it's just the, the feeling is so strong, you know you've got to go for it. Indeed. So, um, so yeah, I, I applied. Uh, the interviews were actually in Birmingham for some reason. Okay. Uh, so I went up to, but I'm literally jumped on a train, went up to Birmingham, did the interview, signed the contract on the spot, and... I was in Paris 10 days later. Oh my goodness. It was that fast. That was really fast. And how old are you at this stage? Oh, uh, 21. Okay, so still young. Yeah. So it was a big kind of leap of faith. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think what was scary for my parents was that when I did my academic year, they knew it had an end date. Yes. When I came out to Disneyland Paris, it was a permanent contract. So they didn't have a clue of how, you know, how long. No. Um, it's funny though I remember at the time one of my really really good friends um, I, I think I jokingly said to her I'm going to go to France I'm going to marry a Frenchman and you won't see me again <laughs> <laughs> and it literally has been that yeah. we do still see each other <laughs> that's nice that's nice which is awesome. yeah yeah we're um, we're planning a weekend together in a few weeks time oh so. fantastic so you, um, you did find your French man and marry him? I did. I did fantastic. find my French man and we'll have been married for 14 years this year. So, oh, wow. um, fantastic. So you, so you can definitely class France as your home now then? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, um, I've actually had French nationality for 10 years this year. Okay. So that was one of the things I, I saw. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, with Brexit is uh, the best decision ever because I know there's a lot of stress in the British expat community here. Yeah, um, I'd imagine. So, uh, definitely. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, Fantastic. About. Oh, fab story. Um, how long were you at Disney? Uh, so I worked there for two years. Um, I worked on the attractions and then um, I joined um, the team in the park called Guest Flow. So they're in charge of managing the guests around the park and in, you know, giving them information. Yeah. Um, and notably um, front of house on all the shows. Um, so welcoming people in. Um, so I loved that. I really yeah. loved that. Um, and then I actually went back. Um, so I did some temping for the Walt Disney Company much later. Okay. Yay. Um, and then I took a year out earlier to do uh, an HR diploma and I was looking for an internship during that time mm -hmm. and I actually managed to go back to Disneyland Paris for that as well so um, fantastic but it's definitely it's definitely where my heart is, is yep. in Disney so and Disney. I'm very lucky because I've still got a lot of friends who work there so I'm still connected to it fantastic um, so how do you keep yourself motivated day to day now that you, you know obviously you're home every day working from home so how to keep yourself upbeat if you have one of those days where you know you may, might feel a bit low or overwhelmed what tips have you got for us um i would say um remember remember what your goals are like mm -hmm. i have very i've just reset my goals for 2018 so i've got yeah. very clear goals on where i want to take my business um, and how I want it to look in 12 months time. Um, so that that's one thing that helps. I did a vision board um, last year, which yep. was a really strange experience because I'm very, um, very sort of down to earth, I guess. Okay. Um, and originally the idea of a vision board was, you know, no, I don't need one of those. Um, and I actually, I actually just fell into doing it. I think at the end of the last end of last summer, and I just started and I got really into it and I yeah. really enjoyed it. And it ended up being something that 
wasn't just about those material things that I want because yeah we you know we all want a bigger house and we all want a better car and things like that but I actually ended up putting images on there to represent the things that are really important to me so like yeah. my family um guiding I put the guide to trefoil on there because uh, I run a unit here okay. um, and that's something that's important for me and obviously I'm bringing my daughter into it as well she's a brownie guide um and she's just started her third year as a brownie so it's really you know I want her to have that ethos because guiding is the most amazing community um I'd been out of it for 20 years literally because I thought when I came here I thought that's it I'm never going to be able to do any mm -hmm. guiding again um and then uh, social media actually led me to discover that there were brownies and guides out here in the okay. British community. Um, and then I was so lucky because I met the right people to be able to launch my unit outside Disney. Mm -hmm. um, and be, to be able to, and I remember going back to a, it was a training weekend that just happened to be in Paris. And I can remember walking back into that room and it literally was a duck going back to water. It didn't matter that I hadn't been in it for yep years it it was it was home and the, you know the the way they spoke the things they were talking about in the training it was it all came from okay. like um fantastic uh, so um fantastic um, I've just started, I've always done digital vision boards um, on the back of my desktops and so forth, but I've never actually done a whole stick and paste vision board. So I'm literally in the middle of doing one now. Um, so I found yesterday a huge mirror that I had, a really pretty ornate mirror that I had wasn't using. So that's okay. perfect for mine. So um, mine's always got to be really branded and really girly and pink. It's really important that it kind of <laughs> works visually for me as well. Um, but and that they can be so amazingly powerful. Yeah. Um, and I know loads of people, um, a friend of mine, uh, that I'm doing a, a course with um, for, for vision board, part of it is for vision boards. Yeah. She um, put on a picture a few years ago on her vision board. She'd been doing them for years. She put on a picture of a cove, if you like, or a beach in Portugal. It was just symbolic of wanting to go to Portugal. Yeah. She didn't know anything about this particular picture. It was just a picture she's taken out of a magazine of Portugal. Okay. Um, or that symbolized Portugal and I think it was the year later or partial year later months later her boyfriend booked a surprise to go to Portugal so oh. she had a bit of notice about this which was fantastic that that alone coming true but when they got there she, it was actually the same beach and literally she got like the photo her actual photo oh, wow. she didn't realize until she was stood on the beach and she's like oh my goodness this is the um, so yeah I, I love some of the stories that come through about how powerful they can be so yeah it's fantastic and even my digital ones I look back and what my one last year and there's quite a lot that's actually come true and that's happened in 2017 so yeah I'm kind of up leveling now mine for 2018 too so yeah uh, what was I gonna ask you what um, obviously you work virtually so I'd imagine you um, rely quite a lot on different systems and tools and apps and so forth have you got three top tool systems apps whichever that you just couldn't live without that really help you to run your business successfully? Yep, definitely. Um, so the first one that I use is um, myhours.com. Um, so that means I can track my time um, mm -hmm. and note, you know, even the five minutes I spend on a task for a client. And it's surprising that all those five minutes do, they do. Up, yeah. they do up, add up to a lot. Um, so my hours would be one of them. Um, being on being on social media, obviously being you know having Facebook pages mm -hmm. and a LinkedIn profile that's up to date. Um, and then what other tools do I use? Um, Canva for designing. Like I don't know what we did without Canva. Yeah, absolutely. It's, just, it's not a day that goes past where I don't do something in Canva for myself yeah. or a client. And I actually wonder what on earth I did before. Yeah, I did use PicMonkey a little bit, but I've never been a Photoshop girl. Um, and I just, I, I don't know what we did, <laughs> how we managed. So yeah, mine is always Canva in my top three as well, without a doubt. Um, what would you, what would your advice be to somebody who is just starting out in business, um, just starting out, you know, being self-employed? Have you got any tips or advice or wisdom that you'd like to share? Um, well, if we narrow it down to um, VAs, because I know a lot of people mm -hmm. are thinking about becoming virtual assistants. Um, so I would definitely say um, look at the organizations that are already out there um, mm -hmm. and their online free groups to get a feel for what the profession is and there's so much um, 
there's a real sense of collaboration between the V8s, which is mm. amazing. And it's, it's, I think it's quite unique to our industry. Yes. Um, so um, that's definitely um, like you can, you can share the questions you have, find out information, but also the support there. If, like you said earlier, if you're having a bad day and you're mm -hmm. tired, then you can go on there and you can, you know, there are people who say, I've lost my mojo. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, you sort of get a, a virtual kick up the bum to you know, move yourself, you know, to get back moving again. So Definitely. I think that can be really helpful. Um, so uh, one organisation that I found really helpful is VIPBA. Yep. Um, and then, um, and but there's also um, the VACT uh, run by Amanda Johnson. Okay. Uh, and I think it's very much. I mean, I would very much encourage um, new VAs to, you know, look at everything that's out there and you don't have to sign up to them all, but they're all, they're all different and different people like and need different things. Definitely. So find the one that's right for you and then, and then fly with it. And it definitely is really, really helpful. I think um, when I started, I, went, I found, I came across the VA handbook. It yeah. was one of the first ones I came across. So I got quite a lot of um, well. help from that. Yeah. When I was just first starting out because when I um, sold my last business and was looking, um, you know, what to do next, what business to start next. And I just kind of thought, well, there's got to be other people that are running businesses like I had been feeling, all, you know, the overwhelm and the stress and not knowing where to start, not having enough hours in the day, all the kind of usual. Um, and I thought, oh, I can help with that. I did. I thought I'd completely made up the virtual assistant thing. <laughs> and I was like, I can do this. And then someone said, you know, it exists, right? It's a virtual assistant. I was like, oh, what? So I, um, <laughs> That the, yeah I hadn't made it up like I thought I had but yeah it's still I think it's growing and, and within the you know entrepreneurial world it's obviously it's a little bit more known but still an awful lot of people don't know what a VA really is and how yeah. to use a VA um, and you know ways in which we can help um, and save them time and a lot of people still struggle with getting their heads around the fact I think that it's a task a lot of the tasks we get given that person can still do it's just yeah. We're doing it for you to save time, you know, when yeah, you can absolutely. concentrate on things you're better at or you prefer doing or you're, you know, happier doing whatever. So, yeah, it's it's a, it's growing definitely, and there's lots of books out as well, isn't there, that kind of support. Yeah, um, absolutely. Outsourcing. Um, Kathy Kathy Salisbury's just printed one. Um, published okay, I've seen that one. Um, virtually painless um, about her journey from an EA to a VA, which is uh, okay. Really, really good, interesting. Is book. it? I'll have a look at that. Yeah, I'm but I think, for, I mean, for entrepreneurs, I think the Female Entrepreneur Association is awesome, the work they're doing. It definitely um, is. And, and what's great is that, with, that they have so many training bundles available that no matter where you are in your business, you'll find where you need to go yeah. and you'll find what you need. So I think that's good. And I'm also part of um, Global Women, the Work Global Women Club Paris. Yep. Um, so there's a group that's in London. There's a new one started, I think, in Nottingham and they're in Birmingham as well. Um, and that's awesome because it's very much um, for the, the business woman who's looking to work internationally and make international links. And so once you've joined a group, then if you find yourself you know, in Paris, for example, mm -hmm and you're there on the day where the, the breakfast is happening, then you can go along to the breakfast, which I think is really awesome. And there's a lot of good contacts to, to be made there. So it's just, it's just amazing how much online support there is. And, and it's, it's brilliant as well when the online that's virtual actually becomes real. Yes. Um, yeah, it's nice, isn't it? So, so I think the, uh, the lesson is surround yourself with positive people and like-minded people. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And, network and ask for help when you need it as well like yeah yourself. absolutely and, and also to help. there's a lot of you know there's a lot of sharing on social media which is only sharing when everything's you know really good and yeah, yeah, that, yeah. You know, i'm so pleased i've had a great week but also you can go into the you can go into those situations and also say i've had a shit week yeah you know, exactly this has, gone, this has gone wrong um you know I, a client turned me down and you know and they're they're, they're horrible times but we all go through them it's part day to day um, it's real isn't it absolutely so it, it's it's about being authentic and being real and sharing the positives and the negatives and then oh, i'm a big fan of real <laughs> yeah absolutely but it may and it but it also makes the successes even you know so much bigger exactly um and when you're going you know when you're going you're getting those knockbacks just focus on each knockback is one one step closer to a yes Indeed. you know keep focusing on you will get the yes it will come Indeed it does. Have you got a favourite inspirational quote you'd like to share with us? 
Oh my gosh. I'm a huge fan of quotes. If you've got any of my social media, it's full of quotes. Well, um, I, can, I can share the one that's my screensaver, can't okay. I? <laughs> so um, that is, you can't cross the sea merely by standing out and staring at the water. Oh, I like that one. I don't think I've come across that one. It's from Rabindranath Tagore. Oh, fantastic pronunciation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would have even attempted it. Fantastic. So before I leave you to your day, um, where can we find you? If you've got your, um, I'll put your links when I add this video onto the website as well. But um, if you just want to tell us your um, website address. Oh, so my website is mybilingualva.com. Um, and I also have a Facebook page with the same name. And I'm on LinkedIn as Jennifer Chamberlain fantastic it's been fantastic and lovely to chat with you today thank you so much for joining me thank you thank you for the opportunity no problem thank you take care see you soon bye bye jennifer